Cindy, how are you? I'm fine, and you? Good. I have to say that we have a magnificent view here. Can you tell me where we are and what makes that place so special to you? Look, we're in Cuyi. That's what I call home. That's where my <laughs> kids have grown up uh, most of the time. Um, we're in Switzerland, on Lake Geneva. Uh, Switzerland is also quite a cool country because uh, I think for hydropower, 60% of, of the power that, that we use here is from hydropower. So uh, it's probably quite a good fit. Yeah, okay. And you know, Pascal, I'm very happy to be here with you discussing on this past year, but obviously what's next. Um, can you tell me what are your key learnings from 2022? If I really elevate and look on a macro view in 2022, I mean, we saw again a lot of natural disasters, yeah. fires, droughts and all kind of things. So yeah. your generation has realized that a long, a long time ago, but we've got to do something. <laughs> about the energy transition, about, about decarbonizing the way we produce power and we store power. And I think hydro is in a really good spot here. And I think people are really starting to realize that hydro can make a big difference here. When I look at the inside, i.e. inside GE, I think also inside we've moved the needle in terms of how hydro is recognized mm -hmm. as a player in its energy transition role. I think we have to switch a little bit uh, faster now from a mode where we where we liked to build these very large power stations yeah. to now going into much more of a retrofit and a service business because I think that's where the future lies. So Pascal, you are saying people my age should join the hydropower industry. Yeah, look, I think you can make a big difference when mm. you when you join hydro. I mean, look at, at some of the project that we've done this year, Itaipu. Yeah. Um, you know, 16 gigawatt or 14 gigawatt, powering almost 2 million people. Uh -huh. uh, you've got Don Pedro, big power station, helping also with um, irrigation, which is also a very, very important topic. I think the whole water management thing is important. Yeah. Hua Bin in Vietnam, 250,000 tons of CO2 out of the atmosphere. It's pretty amazing. And, you know, I think up there, just behind there is Nantes Grance, yeah. <laughs> uh, which you may have seen in the Time yeah. magazine. It's probably not exactly what you're normally reading, but uh, <laughs> where we got uh, the best invention or chosen as the, the one of the best 200 invention of the year or something like that. So, you know, Nantes Grance giant battery, I think we've been publicizing quite a lot about it. So, you know, just for projects, but I think there's quite a big reasons why yeah. hydropower is a good, really good place to be for somebody like you. You know, like you, I would like to see this become a priority and it feels like we are kind of seeing a momentum for hydropower, aren't we? Yeah, look, we've seen a, a momentum for hydropower, you know, for a long time. It's probably the oldest form of power production and power storage that we have. Mm -hmm. And so it's been around for generations. You know, with the arrival of other forms of renewable energy, such as wind and, and solar, which need some kind of aspect of storage of grid stabilization, I think hydropower has seen a renaissance, which is really great to see. Think about Nord de Drance, you know, think about your generation. Yeah. Your kids could probably be still working on Nord de Drance because the lifetime is so long of these power plants. And if you then look at that and compare it to uh, you know, the energy we put in building this plant and the energy we'll give back during the lifetime. Mm -hmm. That ratio is about 1 to 168. And that ratio is, you know, blowing any other form of power generation or storage out of the water. It's quite impressive. So if you step back even further, it's actually a really good idea if you look at, you know, the whole sustainability story, the CO2 balance and so on and so forth that we're all looking for. I mean, we're all looking to decarbonize our society at the end of the day. So it's incredibly powerful. In 2022, you really pushed hydropower like never before. What really needs to be done to make hydropower the engine of a decarbonized um, energy landscape? There's two aspects, you know, externally that we need to figure out. I think there's the whole financing aspect and the permitting. Mm -hmm. I think the drivers for that is, is you know, the, the way that you get the revenue from a, from a hydropower plant, that it's not just power production, that it's also, you know, such as grid stabilization is, is being valued as a revenue stream. People are now starting to value hydrogen as well. Mm -hmm. And then the other challenge we have 
is the permitting. We take a long, long time to get these things permitted. And I think here, there's a lot of actions ongoing to shorten this time, but I think these are the two drivers, you know, finding the right revenue streams and the permitting that we need to look at in the future to really boost it. Is there a personality that you have in mind as a kind model for 2022? The guy, you've, you've seen me spending a lot of time with Bertrand Picard. I, yeah. I mean, this is always somebody, like his vision that, you know, the impossible is in your head is kind of mm. so, something that resonates with me. And I think, you know, to be frank, people thought it was impossible. So we showed that, that it was possible. That was really interesting discussing with you on all this. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much for making your way here. Uh, thank you for taking the time with me. And uh, mm -hmm. look, I wish you a very Merry Christmas. Happy New Year. Looking forward to seeing you in Grenoble. Take care. <laughs> Take care. Bye-bye.